Hello folks, let's go ahead and take a look at aggregate awareness in SAP Business Objects today. We're going to base our examples off of these uh, two tables that you see here, order header and order line, which you would normally see in an ERP system. Uh, I have four orders here and uh, each of them uh, having a few items each and my line table has uh, eight rows uh, four unique items and the total is 360 the total amount is 360 for everything put together before we take a look at aggregate awareness we we'll take a quick look at what is called aggregation in general uh, there are two levels of aggregation uh, one is at an object level where you go ahead and select you know what is the aggregation function uh, function that you want for your object and the other is at a database level so in your uh, select clause you're going to go put in the function that you want uh, for aggregation here is a simple report that i have built earlier and uh, it brings in the order number item name and amount from the uh, order line table as you see i have inserted a quick function here to show uh, how many rows have been brought in from the database uh, eight rows uh, which is all the rows from the order line table now when I pull out the order number you will see that the number of rows decreases to four basically it sums up uh, the information for each item uh, this summing up or this aggregation that you see here is uh, what's happening due to the uh, aggregation function that has been selected here so when I pull out order number it sums up or aggregates uh, the amount based on the item name or if I were to pull out the item name it would aggregate everything based on the order number so uh, that was about the aggregation at the object level or uh, call it aggregation at the report level which can be achieved by setting the aggregation function here the second is the uh, aggregation at the database level now when I pull out go back to my query and pull out the order number previously you saw there were eight rows now when I run this it's gonna bring only four rows uh, this is because of the aggregation that happened at the database level the sum function that I had introduced in my SQL it introduce a group introduces a group by class by the item name or whatever dimension has been selected here if it was customer name it would be you know it would be by the customer name so yes uh, that was a quick look at aggregation both at the object level and database level uh, now let's go into the actual topic here aggregate awareness so uh, what is aggregate awareness uh, to put it in very simple words it's basically awareness that uh, there exists a table which has aggregated information for some of the data that you're looking or some of the measures uh, you know uh, and uh, this will help in case of performance in many a case and uh, I mean of course it's definitely gonna help in performance but uh, what I uh, mean is in some cases performance may not be an issue let's say if you add HANA as a database but again we're not talking of SAP HANA here we're talking of aggregate awareness now uh, I have created a couple of classes here uh, both from each of the tables that I have here let's say uh, end user comes in and uh, he wants to create a new report where he says I want to know the amount for each order so he pulls in uh, order number and amount and he runs this information and uh, sums it up and sees okay 360 I got it all uh, now actually I also want to know uh, you know what is the item name I'll pull in the item name from here uh, the amount uh, there are two of them uh, okay I already have it in my query so I'll leave it that way so 360 and oops now what happened I got the item names but uh, my amount uh, messed up what happened here uh, okay the amount is coming from the header and then some information is coming from the line so obviously the amount got multiplied 
by the number of rows for each order in the line table. In this scenario, you need to go tell your customer, hey, don't do that. When you're bringing in any information from the line table, bring in the amount or you know whatever measures you want from the line table. And then when you run it, uh, things will work out just great. You will get the right amount. Go back in here, put the sum, 360, bingo. But uh, chances are that, you know, you probably don't want to go that route where you want to go educate your customer. And, you know, this is a very simple universe. I mean, you could get off with it. But again, not a good idea, not a good design. One option, let's say uh, you don't have any performance issues with your database. Um, and, you know, you could always get information from the lines table then yeah, just go hide this. Just go hide these objects and say hidden. Save this. Uh, the next time, I'm just gonna pull the query from here. Next time your customer comes in, he is just gonna see, uh, you know, one set of quantity and amount. So he's always gonna get the right information because it will always come from, uh, you know, the order lines table. So it won't go wrong. But yes, uh, you know, is there really a need always to go to the order lines table? Maybe not, but again, as I said, if performance is not an issue, no biggie, well, you're done with it. Here's the other situation. Uh, you have a performance issue, and so you want to make use of aggregate awareness, where you can bring in the measures from an aggregated table, in this case, order header and not necessarily go to the lines table when you don't need any detailed information. Here is where comes an aggregate awareness. So let's just rename this class. We just call it, uh, you know, orders, no more order headers. Let's bring back these objects, change the states into activate, delete these two guys down here, delete this order number, or the line comes here, I mean, that's the line number and uh, item price, uh, just put the customer name here. Mm. Okay, let me save this. Now, we're gonna bring in aggregate awareness for the amount table. Let's first do it for the amount table. Aggregate awareness, again, as I said, is something where you are uh, bringing in the awareness that there is information available at an aggregated level and you don't need to get it from a detail level or a table which has more rows when you can get it from a higher level table so when setting up aggregate awareness the order of the columns should be in such a way that the most aggregated table is at the beginning and then as you go down you have tables that are uh, you know least aggregated let me quickly validate this. Uh, yep, this is good. Okay, save this and uh, let's go back and build our query. Order number, amount, view script. Yep, it's coming from the header table. Good. Now I'm going to bring in item name, view script. Oops, what happened? This time uh, it's still coming from the header table. Uh, why is that so? Because I missed one crucial step. Uh, just using the aggregate awareness function is not enough. You need to go into set aggregate navigation where you're going to set incompatibility between tables and objects. So let's select the first table here, order header. What is the what are the objects that are incompatible with the order header? Uh, order number is available in the header. Customer name is available. Are these objects available? Item price, name, and line number? No. So you're going to say that these three objects are incompatible with the order header table. I'm going to say OK. And what that means is when these objects are selected, for any object within which aggregate awareness has been set up instead of using the order header table go to the next level next uh, you know table where information is not aggregated 
or the table which is being used in your aggregate awareness function. In this case, it's order lines. Just going to say OK. Save this, go back to my queries, build a new query. And I'm going to say order number, amount, view script. Uh, amount is coming from the header table. Now let me pull in the item name. View script. Okay, now the amount is coming from the lines table. So you're going to get the right amount when you run this query. Uh, execute this query and uh, you total it up, you will see it's 360. Now, uh, one other thing. Is there really a need to go to the header table here? Not really. I mean, do you need to get the order number from the header table? Nope. So what we could do is we could set up aggregate awareness even for the order number. Let me quickly do it. Uh, <coughs> aggregate awareness. My first parameter is going to be order number from the aggregated table and my next parameter is going to be again the order number from the next table just not aggregated okay okay save this go back to my query this time let's take a look at the query previously you had seen that this was coming from the header table now it's all coming from the line table so yep uh, you know, now even order number has aggregate awareness in it. And so it comes from, you know, whatever table is required based on the objects that you have in your query. Customer name, on the other hand, is always going to come from the order header table because it's not available in the, uh, you know, it's not available in the lines table. And so it's always going to come from the header table, even if I pull in my item name. So in this scenario, always the header table is going to be used. And uh, yeah, the minute you drop customer name there, the header table goes away. So this will help by bringing in lesser rows and, uh, you know, or in this case, not lesser rows, more rows. But again, they're going to be aggregated if you don't have order number in your query. Let me quickly show it to you in WebE once. So here's my WebE report. Uh, it brings in order number and amount. And... Uh, it's coming from the header table. I bring in the item name and uh, it goes to the line table. Customer name is always going to come from the header table irrespective of uh, you know whether I select the item name or not because it's available only in the header table and for that reason I have not set up aggregate awareness in the customer name. So yeah, uh, uh, that was aggregate awareness uh, benefits. Fewer rows when possible, uh, it'll bring in fewer rows when required or when you strip down your query, it'll bring in fewer rows from uh, into the report uh, from the aggregated table. And so it's definitely going to bring better performance and uh, it's user friendly. As you see, we have, you know, we don't have the same objects repeating again. So it's from an end user perspective, it's beneficial, it's user friendly for them. Yes, a little bit of work for the developer wherein he has to go set up all these aggregate awareness functions and uh, go set up the uh, incompatibility from here. Uh, again, uh, it's been set up for order number, quantity and amount. I have not set it up for customer name, item price, uh, item name and line number. And uh, taking a look at the navigation uh, with the header table you will select which are the objects that are incompatible which means that when any one of these objects are selected go into uh, go to the next table from an aggregation awareness perspective uh, in this case the order lines uh, thank you for watching folks hope this was helpful and in my next tutorial i will uh, Try and explain the same thing again, but uh, from the perspective of a data mart.